Hi students, this is Sister Nasia from the Department of English. Today we'll discuss about the poem Legend by Judith Wright. The learning outcomes of the poem are students will be able to comprehend Judith Wright's poetry, voicing feminine concerns on environmental issues which override all gender and national barriers. They'll be able to analyze the physical hardships described by the poet that the boy has to face during the course of his quest in the poem. Evaluate the specific language techniques used in the poem. Also, they apply the qualities of life learned from the poem to real life. Coming to the life of Judith Wright, she is a prolific poetess, conservationist, and a campaigner for Aboriginal rights in New South Wales. She was an introvert and a solitary child. Judith's only solace lay in her creative skills. She herself remarked, only thing I had to treasure was poetry and the knowledge that I was going to be a poet. During the Second World War, the Australians reeled under the fear of Japanese invasion. The experience of Second World War was full of anguish. It raised several questions in her mind, the sheer waste of war. Why at all do people have to fight wars? Judith Wright too turned inwards for finding an answer to it. Besides this emotional turmoil, she was rapidly turning deaf. Her deafness gave her poetry readings a directness and force any poet would envy. Her interest in conservation and wildlife preservation also began growing. Soon in her life, she became an active campaigner for environmental issues and against nuclear war. In 1966, she lost her husband. With him, she lost her inspiration to write and she abandoned writing poetry. Let us look at some of her awards. She received Grace Levin Prize, Australian Britannica Award, Robert Frost Memorial Award, Australian World, World Prize, Queen's Medal for Poetry. In 1973-74, she was also made a member of the Australia Council. She had been a prolific writer with more than 50 publications to her credit when she died. John Tranter, once one of the Australian's leading poets, expressed his admiration in words. What she has left us is a spirited body of writing and a model for a humane and committed concern for the future of the human race. Let us look at the poem, Legend. Judith Wright's poetry found its inspiration in the objects around her. It was inspired by the various places where she had lived. Her sources of inspiration were just not the trees, nature, animals inhabiting her country, the Aboriginal culture, but also her husband. She produced great poems while addressing her love poems to him. The title of the poem offered for study itself is very thought provoking. Legend suggests the evocation of celebrity or a fable. The protagonist with a vision and a dream in his eye overcomes all kinds of dangers and hindrances to finally taste success. The ooze with confidence in their abilities and the spirit vibrant and indomitable which characterizes the image of the fathers of modern Australia symbolized through the image of a boy in the poem. This poem is about a poor blacksmith boy who belongs to labor class. The first stanza opens, the blacksmith's boy went out with a rifle and a black dog running behind. The blacksmith's boy begins his sojourn along with just a rifle and a dog following him. When she composed the poem, she was pregnant with his child. 
She devoted this poem to her husband. The poem depicted the process of conception and a woman's response and feeling to the knowledge of a growing child of love within her. The following lines try to depict the hindrances in his path. Cobweb snatched at his feet, rivers hindered him, thorn branches caught at his eyes to make him blind, and the sky turned into an unlucky opal. The cobwebs of past routine and tradition, the temptations of leading a life of comfort, settlement and security tried to come in his way and tried to hinder his progressing steps. The cobwebs tried to snatch at his feet, even the river hinders him and the thorn branches try to strike his eyes and turn him blind. The sky acquires the ominous opal hue, foreshadowing storm and thus trying to dissuade him from moving further. But the young boy does not seem to mind it at all. He says confidently, I can break branches, I can swim rivers, I can stare out any spider I meet, said he to his dog and his rifle. The continuous repetition of I can show his faith in his abilities. However, now the boy addresses these confident words to his dog and his rifle, the only two of his items and possessions. The poetess repeats his to emphasize his poverty of possessions and belongings and yet the confidence of the young boy. The second stanza of the poem begins with the depiction of felicity and speed with which the boy moves forward, letting nothing block his way in his old black hat. The blacksmith's boy went out, went over the paddocks with his old black hat on his head. It seems every element has transpired to discourage his progress. The stanza delineates the different forms in which physical adversities annoy him, appearing suddenly without any warming and in the most unexpected manner. Mountains jumped in his way, rocks rolled down on him, and the old crow cried, you will soon be dead, and the rain came down like mattocks. The mountain appears to block his way, rocks try to roll over him, and the rain lashes him in the cruelest manner in the style of a matic. However, the physical harms don't dissuade him, nor does the psychological one when the crow tries to stop, stop him by raising fears of death in his mind by crowing threatening words, you will soon be dead, but these words too cannot stop him. His spirit is indomitable and but he only said, I can climb mountains, I can dodge rocks, I can shoot an old crow any day, and he went on over the paddocks. The stumbling blocks only succeed in making the young boy more determined and confident in his capabilities. He is confident of climbing the mountain, or getting over the rocks, or even shooting down the crow, trying to instill fear in him. His adventurous spirit is undeterred and he continues on his way undaunted. The next or the third stanza is another important one that depicts the fury of nature against him. In this battle even two belongings that he had also failed him. The poetess tries to delineate it in the following words. When he came to the end of the day the sun began falling up came the knight ready to swallow him like the barrel of a gun, like an old black hat, like a black dog hungry to follow him. Then the pigeon, the magpie and the dove began wailing and the grass lay down to pillow him. After the heavy rain, soon the night spreads swallowing the sun. Darkness makes his own belongings to rebel against him and fail him when he needs them the most. This stone is set when it is compared to that of the barrel of a gun, 
or like an old black hat and like a black dog hungry to follow him the reputation of black is significant here to show the disloyalty of his belongings and their failing him in the moment of need these images suggest violence and death the wailing of gentle creatures like a pigeon magpie and dove threatens death even the grass seems to get ready to receive his body after the suggested violence in the preceding lines of darkness and night not surprisingly in the darkness of the night everything and everybody fails him his rifle broke his hat blew away and his dog was gone and the sun was falling the boy is all alone with a broken rifle a blown away hat a missing dog and dipping sun but he is still undeterred the pliant acceptance of malignant fate is not in him he is made of a clay that does not understand failures but only struggle he is still ready to chase his dream and vision with the old fire the penultimate stanza takes him to his dream hard realized he is like a knight in old fables who has been able to conquer all his hardships and labor are duly rewarded but in front of the knight the rainbow stood on the mountain just as his heart foretold the rainbow on the mountain the achievement the correspondence to the dream that he had been cherishing in his heart just as his heart foretold he sees the rainbow crushing the mount crusting the mountain appearing in front of the night it holds back the forces of darkness behind itself all this while it was the sheer desire to realize his dream that had spurred his steps forward but now when the object was present in front of him the reward of his toil and perseverance in all its glory on the mountain nothing could make him wait longer his faith in himself was vindicated he ran like a hare he climbed like a fox and with nimble steps fleet foot and dexterity of movement he caught it in his hands the colors and the cold like a bear of a bar of ice like the column of a fountain like a ring of gold in picturesque similes the poet is draws the beauty of the moment and the object however the rainbow is surprisingly both full of colors and at the same time cold like a bar of ice and a ring of gold with a share of mixed blessings the old veil of the soft pessimistic creatures is now replaced by their flight of rapture and celebration the pigeon the magpie and the dove flew up to stare even the grass which in the previous stanza was laid itself down to receive his body now stood up again on the mountain the black color and the associated darkness that dominates the first three stanzas disappear to be replaced with the new radiance of the multicolored rainbow that holds back the night the last or the fifth stanza is a celebration of australian grit and glory symbolized through the blacksmith's boy the boy surmounting all the deterring forces emerges victorious he proudly hangs the prize on his shoulder the blacksmith's boy hung the rainbow on his shoulder instead of his broken gun in the beginning we had seen him carry a broken rifle but now it is the triumphant souvenir of the hunt his dream realized the rainbow as long as was not rewarded everything came in his way of progress trying to stop him from pursuing his vision but later when his mission is accomplished and he marches proudly and joyously everything beginning from a lizard and snake to the whole world mysteriously makes way for him even adores him lizards ran out to see snakes made way for him and the rainbow shone as brightly as the sun all the world said 
nobody is braver nobody is bolder nobody else has done anything equal to it he went home as easy as could be with the swinging rainbow on his shoulder the boy is presented as a conqueror or a hunter with his trophy in this stanza the indomitable spirit of the australian their determination to create a nation overcoming all the varieties of hurdles of alien landscape and climate all the world said nobody is braver nobody is bolder nobody else has done anything equal to it it is a tribute to the creative and robust determination of the first settlers of australia the land of opportunity the poem ends on the victory note of the blacksmith's boy who went home as easy as could be with the swinging rainbow on his shoulder let us conclude saying that judith wright's poetry speaks a sense of sacredness in the land the sacredness of simple things like animals and plants and the violation of that sacredness she has a feeling not only for the land but also for the aboriginal people judith wright through her life went through many historical australian events which seem to be documented in her poetry these many events include depression world war 2 living on a farm which is why judith's poetry is worthwhile to be studied by all the students so here ends the analysis of the poem now let us look at some of the questions that we can answer do you think legend only tells the story of a blacksmith's boy or can it be read at a deeper level too what are the physical hardships described by the poet that the boy has to face during the course of his quest what do you think the rainbow stands for does the boy actually pick up the rainbow and take it home with him what according to right are the qualities needed to succeed in life does she express these openly or do you deduce it from the poem you have read what features or characteristics of the human condition can you identify in judith wright's legend how has the poet used specific language techniques to emphasize these attributes of life thank you